Hey everybody, welcome back to Pastel Lessons for the Beginners. This is Pastel Lesson Part 3 for Beginners. And um, today we're going to work on the same image. You can see it back over my shoulder. That's the image of the little trees done at Yosemite Park. But that one was done on Canson paper. And today I'm going to be working on UART paper. So let's get started. So welcome to Pastel Lessons for Beginners part three. Today I'm, I'm going to work on, on the same image, the little trees at Yosemite Park, but this is 400 grit UART paper and I've colored it with um, acrylic paint, raw umber, very thin down, just to get a base under painting done. And I've sketched it in the basic shapes with the Conte pastel pencil. I just use this color because I like it. You could use other colors as long as the color shows up on the paper. Now, a little bit of information about composition. The best composition has three to five large shapes. So here's one large shape. Here's another one. That's two. This would be considered another one. Three and four. Eh, maybe that little bitty one there. Shapes should be varied. Lar very large, medium, small. Uh, now, I've tested out the colors. These are the same colors that I used on this piece, and you can already see how much more brilliant they are on this sanded paper. So, I think what I, what I usually like to do is start with the darks, and that is the um, probably indigo blue. So, I get my blues mixed up. I'm going to work on, on putting in these darks. Now see how that already shows up so much better. I do love UART paper. The paper that I like the most was Kitty Wallace paper, but unfortunately you can't get that anymore. It's not being manufactured anymore. And remember the last time we talked about breaking up the directions of your strokes. Also, I didn't talk about how hard you push. Here you can see I'm pushing in the new pastel pretty hard. Up here, where I'm going to vary the color, I'm not gonna have it this really dark, I'm gonna put it in just lightly, kind of a, sort of a placeholder for those dark trees. Now this is the halfway point, so pretty much wouldn't want those dark trees to end at the halfway point. I'll put in the shadow down here. Oh, the other thing you might notice is I changed the orientation. I just find that the vertical, particularly with this kind of rock formation in the background, the vertical fits the feel of the... Uh, composition better. And I'm just going to just lightly block in where the shadows are going to be down here. And this whole mountain is going to be in shadow. Then like before, I'm going to take this orange and block in gently because we still don't, even though this is sanded paper, we don't want it, the tooth to fill up too quickly. So this is just kind of, again, sort of a placeholder. But this is going to be where the sunshine will be. Um little bit of sunshine up here. We don't want to th for this little corner to be distracting from here. Oh, and the other, th other thing I decided to add, I decided to add blue up here to this little tip of sky. Now, let's go ahead and get in a little more of the, the green on these trees. Put 
think in the other one I didn't run the trees all the way up behind the uh, aspen trees. I don't know if those are aspen or um, willow. There's a some kind of a willow out west. Since I'm from Kentucky, I don't know these out west trees. These obviously are pine trees. Okay. It's already taking pretty good shape. Let's put let's put a little more purple down here. Now you might say, I don't see the purple in these shadows. I don't either. This photograph has those shadows completely blocked up. But a dear friend of mine years ago told me to choose your colors with your heart, not your mind, or not your eyes. Choose your colors with your heart, not your eyes. And I always think of that when I'm trying to figure out what kind of color combination I want to do. Because it just needs to be, like I said in the last two videos, the, the value of it needs to be correct. And I happen to just love purple. Let's put a little bit of that purple, not too, a little bit of that purple back here. You know the term shrinking violet? It's kind of the term that purple recedes. And you would want this rock to be receding back. Now, I used that gray in, in the last one. I put some gray on here. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if I love that gray up against this green. But, um... A little more, it's a little bit different color of blue. I think this might be spruce blue. There, I like that better. Let's glue it down a little bit more. Always a good idea to stop for a minute, kind of step back, look what you're doing. Okay, even though I sketched it out earlier and I've been kind of looking at it, for the for the drama of it, I think I want to drop these trees down a little bit lower. So I'll take a paper towel on this sanded paper. It's so easy to make corrections. Rub out that shadow. And I'm going to bring this whole thing down a little lower. So this will be the bottom of the dark trees. And since this paper, the paper I'm working on, the image is 9 by 12. Well, the paper's 9 by 12. This particular piece of paper is 9 by 13. So I've got all this extra space down here. That way, and I love that also about pastel, that way if I decide, oh, I think I want to put more space back down here, I can just run the design back down here, and when I mat it, move the mat around a little bit. Just want a little sliver of light. See that, just that little bitty sliver of light?
You want your shapes to be varied. Like I wouldn't want this line of this area of orange to be the same size as this or this as large as this. You want variation. Push a little bit harder. I realized, oops, realized in the last video that my easel is always shaking. Nice if I could figure out a way to make it more stable. Okay, take the side of the pastel, push a little harder, block in this light a little better. Now I think I'll go ahead and lighten up my trees a little bit more up here at the top because my sun's coming from over here. Actually, this yeah, on this photograph, the sun is coming from this side because the shadows are running that way. some of this. Let's do the medium orange. Not the, This was the lightest yellow that I pulled out of my set. This is a little bit darker. tops of these pine trees. Now remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, which I guess that's the only way you can watch it, um, you can stop the YouTube video at any point. Hopefully you're following along with me with your own pastels and stop it, uh, catch up with me, and then you can start it again. I think there's also a way you can put it on slow-mo so that you, what I'm doing would, would go slower, but I'm not, I, of course, then my voice would sound kind of funny, wouldn't it? I've never tried slow-mo. So I, I watch how to, how to um, play a ukulele videos, but I've never figured out how to put it on slow-mo. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about that. That's one of those things where you st stand back and look. I'm going to push harder with the new pastels now and get this blue in. So less of the paper color showing through. And this is a 
kind of a mauve color that I used in, in this one. I'm going to calm down that orange back there. Now, if I use a mauve here, you need to repeat the color somewhere and just put it in one place. Put a little bit of it in the tree. Ah, you know, another thing I could do with it. Let's go ahead and get those tree trunks in. Remember in the last video I said don't line them up like telephone poles? You need to vary. These two are close together. Put another one out here a little bit farther away. Let there be a space here. And here I see another little grouping in the middle, which is nice for nature to do that for us. And then this grouping here, although I, I ended up making this thinner, it's fun and every time I do this, and I've, I've done some real little ones that I have for sale on my Etsy site. Um, the really little ones are, are different also. A little bit different. Okay. Now, I think this is too strong back here. It's really jumping out when I'm working on something and my eye goes up here. I know it's too strong. So paper towel and something at a distance, soften up the edges. I'm gonna get the clean part of the paper towel. That's a little better. I don't want this to be too distracting, but I'm not quite sure about those strokes until I finish up more detail down in here. Let's add some green. I remember last time I worked on it, I really liked the green kind of down in here. And this shadow is pretty dark. It has a lot of blue on it, but the shadow is shadowing these grasses. These grasses basically are yellow and orange. So I'll take some yellow and orange over top of this blue. It'll lighten it up. I'm doing vertical strokes because now we're getting into the grasses that are growing upward. One thing I like to do when I'm about halfway through and I'm kind of deciding what needs to be darker, how, how, making sure the composition's working, I take it this old dirty mat and I stick a mat over top of it because you can see this part here is running into the same color as the paper. Put a mat over it and think, okay, what if I drop the whole thing down, eliminate the sky, and add more grasses? Nah. I don't like that. I'm going to keep the sky. I think the sky might be a little brighter than I want it to be, though. Yeah, okay. So if it's too bright, let's take a little bit of this cream color. Cream color over top of the blue, and it's gonna it's gonna dull that blue down. 
it's the same value, pretty much the same value as the blue. Might be a touch lighter. But it also adds some interest to that blue. There, I think that's a little better. Now, I want to, I really like, even though the camera, of course, blocked up these shadows way too dark, I like the drama of that. So I'm gonna come back in with this Prussian blue. it up even more. Because after all, I'm not trying to do a photograph. I'm trying to do an expression of what I felt when I saw that little group of trees over there in Yosemite standing in a field pretty much by themselves. They were just there all alone. Not a, lot, not a lot of other little groups of trees around them. And the light was on them so bright that they just glowed. And that's what, that's the feeling that I want to try to get. Now let's come back with this orange again and push down even harder. You know, sometimes it's a good idea, when I, in my sketchbook I do this, to write down what I'm excited about when I'm doing the sketch. Particularly, you know, it, it's helpful when you take a photograph of something, if you have a little sketchbook with you, write down why you took the photograph. What was it? What was it that all of a sudden made you go, ooh, wow, look at that. That ooh, wow, look at that feeling is so important in art. Why am I excited about this scene? One time I was down at Red River Gorge by the creek, by the river, and the sun was shining so bright on this little group of orange trees at the very end of the creek or river. And I even wrote in my sketchbook, glowing orange trees. It was in the fall, the trees were glowing, that orange color. And when I did the painting, then I already knew what I, what I was wanting to emphasize, even though in the photograph, because the trees were so far back in the photograph, it didn't show up that well in the photograph. But because I put a little note in my sketchbook, I thought, oh yeah, that's, that's what that was about. Okay. This is that in-between orange, yellow. Now generally, according to Carlson's landscape book, your trees generally are almost the darkest part because the light is above here, kind of hits the top of the trees, and an awful lot of your trees are in shadow, except in this photograph, the trees are being hit real, with a lot of real strong light on them. So that's why they will be almost as light as this field. I'm still going to make the field lighter. There you go. 
goes that wiggly easel again. Okay. Shadow. Green. Put a little purple over it. I don't want it just to be a straight shadow across here. You see there's there's some light here, a little break up, a little more here. But if you make these areas too bright, for one thing, then the eye's just going to go down here to these little broken areas, and we don't want that. This length and this length is too similar. I think I'll shorten this one a little bit. Put a little bit of green over top of that shadow. Now I'm going to take the cream that I put up here. I'm going to re-emphasize not all of them, but, but some of these tree trunks. when you're doing trees, you can push hard and let up and push hard again, and that'll help do a variety, give you a variety on the branches. Push hard, let up, push hard, push hard, let up. That one might be a bit much. Could take a little, little gray and Calm it down a little bit. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's consider it. Let's stop and let's consider it. Sometimes I like to take a picture of the painting in my phone and then turn it into a black and white. It really helps you see the value. And I think, you know, phones are a little tricky, but the upper left-hand corner I think is too dark. The shadows behind the tree probably need a little modulation. Maybe the tree, the difference in the value between the tree and the field needs to be adjusted. Okay, well, um, I was off camera listening to the video. I added a little more shadow right in here and then ran some orange branches over top of it. I quieted down this with some gray, added a little more interest in here, and again I'm going to make the field, oh that's that cream, wait a minute, sometimes my pastels get so dirty, can't figure out what color it is. I'm going to take this lightest orange, uh, yellow, and make the field a little brighter. Add a little more brightness right here to the side of the, the trees. Add our falling leaves, like we had in the last one. Anytime you're putting in falling leaves, it's a good idea to put in just a few, kind of step back, see if you like them. If you don't, You gotta be careful about making sure it's kind of a variety of uh, of groupings. There. Now, maybe a little more of this cream on some of these branches.
I think that's enough fooling around with that one. I did notice while I was editing the other video for a beginner lesson, this didn't turn out to be the reference photo. It didn't turn out to be the easiest lesson I could have put together for you all. So I'm going to do a part four of the little house on the hill to make a really, really beginning lesson. And uh, now that I finally remembered how to get my videos into YouTube, I'm excited about doing another one. Anytime I repeat a project, it helps cement it into my brain. Oh, yeah, that's the way to do it. These shapes up here, you know, after, after I get off, off camera, give myself a little more time to consider some things, I might change this around a little bit, but probably not. I think it's, it's pretty good the way it is. Mm -hmm. Bring those down to actually touch this. You end up fooling with something like this a lot and not necessarily improve it. There. Okay, let's call it quits on that one. Hey folks, I wanted to show you the final result of the Canson paper on the right side and the UART paper on the left. I still like the UART better. It gives me a stronger color, more vibrant. And uh, the Canson paper, as you can see, the paper is still showing through. The color's a little bit weaker, but it might be more expressive. I don't think I've completely solved all the issues with this one. There's a little close-up of the trees. So in finishing up, I lightened the sky, lightened the rocks, changed a little bit on the darkness of the trees. Hey, thanks for watching Pastel Lessons for Beginners Part 3. Um, I've decided Part 2 and Part 3 are both kind of difficult for beginners, so I'm working on a Part 4. I hope you enjoyed this one. Remember, with YouTube, you can stop it at any point, and hopefully you're following along with me, and then you can stop it and uh, then uh, catch up. So hope to see you on part four. It's going to be a little house on the hill, which will be easier. I promise. Thanks.